Hello folks, welcome to Board Game Corner. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. This week we're taking a look at Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. We're taking on the role of an investigator to search for the unspeakable. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition is brought to you by Fantasy Flight Games. It supports 1-5 to five players, ages 14 and up, and the playtime varies greatly depending upon which scenario you, ch you choose. Some are as short as 60 minutes, and another is an epic 6 hours. No doubt. <laughs> Alright, let's go see what the mansion has to offer. Mansions is a fully cooperative game that takes you on a harrowing adventure through the dark and desolate halls and alleyways of Arkham. The second edition offers a number of thrilling and confounding scenarios, each with unique and predictable maps, intricate puzzles, and bloodthirsty monsters. There are too many rules and experiences to go into here. Plus, we don't want to spoil the story for you good folks. So, this overview will dive into the app and some basic gameplay, and it's important to note that this version of Mansions does require the app. So essentially the app becomes the keeper. There are multiple ways to handle the usage of the app. One player can solely use the app and guide the rest of the players through the game. Or you can choose to pass the device around the table, allowing each player to engage with it. And lastly, my personal favorite is to have a large monitor that is visible to the table passing a mouse around the table, and I find it to be so immersive. So there are four provided scenarios with varying difficulties and playtime. Cycle of Eternity, Escape from Innsmouth, Shattered Bonds, and Rising Tide. Once you select a scenario, then we move to the investigator selection. We have upgraded our version of Mansions with, and added in the first edition investigators, monsters, and tiles with the provided conversion pack, which is a great way to expand the game out of the box. I can't imagine going back and playing the first edition ever again. As you can see here, we have several character selection screens. Again, this is due to the conversion pack which allowed us to bring over the first edition characters. So select your investigator, then find the corresponding cards and figures. The app then sets up the starting items for the investigators, along with all the starting clues. Then that quickly, you are off and running. Since the app is the keeper, it kicks off the story, initial starting tiles, and token placement, basically doing all the bookkeeping. You will then place the corresponding tiles and tokens on the table, along with your investigators. On your turn, you can do two of the following actions. You can move your investigator up to two spaces. You can search. Searching is very streamlined now. If you are in an area with a search token, simply find the corresponding token on the app and click it. You never know what you may find. And you may have to perform a skill check to succeed in your search. On a skill check, you roll and input the result into the app. The app is very clear for what you need to do. You can explore, opening doors, again clicking on the app to see what is revealed. Sometimes doors will require keys. If so, you will be prompted to confirm that you do indeed possess the key. Searching and exploring can also reveal a puzzle. Again, the app does a brilliant job setting up these puzzles. There are several puzzle types. Again, to not spoil too much, we will just look at a basic one. For this puzzle, you will use your observation skill. Carson Sinclair has an observation skill of five, giving him a five moves to solve the puzzle. If you have any clue tokens, you can add them to give you more chances to solve the puzzle. In this case, it only takes Carson four moves to solve it. You can interact and question NPCs that you encounter. You can trade with other investigators. You can push monsters or carry other investigators. Set fire to areas, if you have a light source that is, and steal from your fellow investigators. Although, you have to be careful about that one. You can also interact with your surroundings by barricading a door to protect yourself from monsters or extinguish a fire in an area. And finally, you can attack a creature that is in range. Again, the app handles the heavy lifting here, telling you what skill check to perform to have a successful attack. After the investigators have taken their turn, then it's time for the mythos phase. First, the event happens. This can simply be a noise in the distance or something far more sinister. It can affect one or all of the investigators, often calling them out by name. Then the monsters get their actions, moving and attacking. 
then finally investigators that are within range must perform the dreaded horror checks. If you take damage or horror during these encounters, cards are drawn from the damage and horror decks, sometimes face up with varying effects, sometimes face down, just to show you have taken damage. After the Mythos phase, then a new round begins with the Investigator phase. Players continue resolving rounds until they have won or lost the game, ending in victory, death, or insanity. One last note, if you do find yourself going insane, the game has you keep the specifics of your insanity a secret from your fellow investigators. Sometimes it's simple, like not being able to speak or being a kleptomaniac, or it can be far more sinister and you must eliminate one of your fellow investigators. Adding a fun twist with a possible traitor element to the game, you never know. All right, what do we think of this game? You know, I'm gonna let Randy go first since this is your theme, right? My theme. <laughs> <laughs> For some background, uh, back when I was in high school in the late 70s, um, I was reading H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe and all my friends were reading Stephen King. In fact, I've even got my Lovecraft shirt right here. Nice. <laughs> uh, but I was in Kansas at the height of the disco era, so there were no such things as goths that I could you know, find some solace with or anything like that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Fantasy Flight has been one of the best companies for delivering the accurate feel oh, of the Lovecraftian mythos. So true. Um, you see Cthulhu spread across games and movies and everything All over the these place days. These days yeah. um, and it's almost as bad as uh, vampires were at one time or zombies, zombies are now. <laughs> yeah. And, and in many cases, they've just made Cthulhu a big tentacled monster and, and all the, the creatures that go with him. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the key things about about the Lovecraft mythos and his stories is this sense of futility and hopelessness. Hopeless. And you, uh, you, this when, game when, has that. And that's what I really <laughs> want to commend them on. Uh, their games everywhere from Arkham Horror to Elder yeah. Sign to uh, the first and second editions of Mansions of Madness and Eldritch Horror. They really have done a, yeah. a, a great job where you feel like Oh my gosh, I'm not trying to beat something up. I'm trying to escape with my life, life. and yeah. my sanity. Yeah. Uh, so I want to commend them uh, on maintaining that tradition of great delivery of theme. They, they really did an excellent job with the theme. Um, one of the things I like best is the mechanic of the sanity and health. In many games, you're thinking, I'm just going to, I just, I just got to stay above zero. But right. this is tuned yeah. so that it's very likely either you will get to a place where you've, you're wounded or you're insane. You can keep playing, and that's the key. It's, you're not done once you go crazy. Right. Uh, so I And that is an interesting element now as well, where you truly can become a traitor in the game. Absolutely. And be yeah. out for yourself to win. Yes, yes. And it, so, but and you never know. When somebody goes crazy, they keep that, that, that secret. Uh, that secret yeah. And the, the characteristic or the limitation they have is secret. So they're not behaving the way you want them to in right. many cases. Why uh, are you going over there? Yeah, or why are you stabbing me in the back? Yes. Like, like Mark did the other day. I don't know what you're talking about. No. <laughs> so, so it's uh, those things make the game uh, rich in the theme uh, uh, yeah. of hey, uh, we're fighting against things which we're we, even if we win, we're not going to come out of this hole. Right. Um, so I want to commend them on that. And I don't know how much you want me to say before you say some oh, of your go, things. Oh, no, go for it. Okay. So, um, like all Fantasy Flight games, or at least the ones we've played, the, the components are excellent. Mm -hmm. The thing that differentiates this, as you might already know, or Mark's already explained yep. you in the overview, is the app. The app. Uh, and, and it's it, easily half the game. I mean, you can't, yes. you cannot play this without the app. Right. Now, the app, we've played games with apps before. And I think there's a challenge with uh, whenever you're mixing a tablet with a board game to have this kind of split mind. Mm -hmm. Um, we played Golem Arcana mm -hmm. um, maybe a year or two ago. Yeah, and, and it, you could play without the board. You could play without the board, and it, it was it was unfortunate because I felt like my mind was split. I wanted I wanted a full video game or I wanted the full board game, but having half of each really didn't make me feel good. It was still a good game. Don't get me wrong. For those of you who love it, I support your your <laughs> desire to play it. <laughs> to play it. It's a very interesting and well crafted game. Right. But I think it it struggles with that that uh, schism of mind. And I think the app here can have that issue, but the difference is this. Mark loves playing with the screen in view, yes. and he loves play, displaying it on a big screen and seeing both at one time. Right. Although I like it in that form, mm -hmm. I like it better 
when one with person someone, plays with the tablet yeah. as the what narrator. you might consider the narrator or dungeon yeah. master. Right. So so we had our friend Mo yeah. do, that, do that and and he did the voices yep. and it was great. he did a fine job. So And uh, as I said in the overview, there were multiple ways to do this. Yes. So, so you you know, you can do a tablet, you can pass a phone around, you can do it on a big screen. Yes. And like me, I put it up on the giant theater <laughs> yes. screen and that was phenomenal. I feel like it's more immersive. But when puzzles come up, you have to pass you have, it. You have, you have to pass because it or, or display it for everybody And the, the thing it. that's nice about displaying it for puzzles is that everybody can kind of contribute to, wait, no, not there. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. And so it becomes a real cooperative process, even True. the puzzle does. But if it's a handheld device, it's more of the user itself. So it depends on how you like to play. Mm -hmm. um, but I've... I can't say that I dislike any of them. I enjoyed playing in every aspect of that. When Mo, well, they're all good. Yeah. When Mo was playing as our our keeper or narrator, I think it's more of a narrator job because he's still in engaged cases, in the game. Yeah. So uh, that was fun. But I, I I definitely enjoy having it on the big screen. I definitely. If we're going to pass stuff around, I'd rather pass the mouse around. Now, there are some things. Even though I think the app does allow the different uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms, the one. There are a couple places I think it's deficient, so there's okay. room for improvement. Of course. Um, and I know that you, there are oh. limitations with space, space and things on, on applications I know where you're or going. apps. Yep. Is that I would love to see all the now not all the text voice acted, but the, character, the characters. Character so text. whenever there's a character that says something, I would love to actually hear, hear a voice, voice actor do it. Now they do a little bit of voice acting at they the beginning do. of the end. Yep. I'm worried for my master. I, I think he's in danger. Please help. Finally. A lead. You hang up the phone, throw on your coat, and leave for the Vanderbilt estate. Uh, but I'd love to hear each of the characters. I agree. That would part. be very cool. But it also opens up opportunity for those who'd like to engage and have a theatrical, I'm going to use a voice for this segment. You know, people can jump in and do that on their own. They, they, can. Well. Yeah, they can. So if it was like a setting, potentially, that you could turn on and off. It would be pretty cool. It would. I, I think that would be. A good, um, but right I, I agree. I think it would be. It's already so immersive that having that that would just top it off. And that's why I didn't give it a full four. Right. I say see room for improvement there. Right. But they do good, do a good job with the soundtrack. They have uh, sound effects. So yeah. if you break glass, for example, when you things when happen, you, yeah, you things hear happen. something in the next room. Yes. And one of my favorite things about the app, number one, just awesome, is that now. It's like the fog of war. You don't know what the mansion has the offer. Yes. You don't know what's in that next room. You have to explore and find out. Where yeah. before, in, in first edition, the whole thing was laid out. You knew, oh, we probably need to go over there. Yeah, there's the kitchen. Let's yeah. go over the kitchen. And, and if, if I were to say um, <laughs> the best thing about Mansion of Madness, <laughs> what was it, Hero Quest? Hero. Thing? Okay. But if this is one of one of the many best things yeah, about Mansion no of Madness second edition is the fog of war, as you mentioned. You walk in and you see exactly what your characters would see, which yep. is the lobby and a bunch of doors, and yep. you have no idea what's behind any of this. So that's, which is awesome. It's, it's an excellent thing. And about when you that. have enough tiles, like, you know, we've incorporated all our first edition stuff into it, you really don't know what's behind those doors because then it mixes things in from from the first edition. Yeah. And it's and I've I played I played more than Randy has, and I played that first scenario because I've introduced several people to it. And it's been different almost every time, and I've just been blown away by that. You know, the overall goal is probably the same, yeah, in general, but it just the getting there and what to do has been different. I love it. So that really enhances the replayability. Yeah. Um, I didn't give it a super high score, but I just give it a high score mm -hmm. because of that is even if you play the same scenario, it will unfold differently. Right. The, the construction of the rooms might be different. And again, with the, the the app, right? You can add so many scenarios just like that. Yeah, I mean, and, can, and we're, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that's going to make the game fresh all the time. Yeah, yeah and we'll keep people coming back for yeah. more. Now, if there's one thing that you know, in addition to adding the voice acting, I would like to see uh, a little bit more of a thematic frame to some of the text because we played the six hour uh, yeah. campaign, if you will. Which I'll note, right, that it didn't feel like six hours. It went by really it went, quickly. It went, it went by like folks who play video games, suddenly time disappears. It was just like yeah. that. But it does have the potential problem since you're constantly looking at these these things that say do a horror check, do a sanity right. check, or or you know do a monster check, mythos check, and things like that. There are thing, times that you feel like you're just looking at an endless gauntlet of uh, things of to do text. But on the flip side of that, I definitely like that they're doing the bookkeeping, and I don't have to. Oh do no, 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 I no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, I would like to maybe see a more thematic thematic 
frame around those things so that when they say right. it's time for the mythos check and you see you see dun, dun, dun. yeah you, you see what <laughs> some sound effects do that right. maybe claws around the right. text and when it's a monster check you see the monster silhouette or something like that and then when it's a horror check mm -hmm. you hear a scream and you hear some you see something like this so that it doesn't look like just another text blob because i found myself doing this and it's mm -hmm. le less so with shorter campaigns yeah but as with the longer campaigns you're saying I just want to get in there and kill this guy right. before he tortures me or something <laughs> exactly. like that. Exactly. Uh, before we go insane to where your your mind starts doing blah, 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 blah. Okay, there's the test I have to do and blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what happens right. next after I roll the dice. So this isn't a big detriment, but I'm saying this is something that might add a little bit more theme, a little bit more color to this. Yeah. Uh, the app is wonderful. It is. There, there are some there but are I, tweaks for improvement. For me, for the thing for the app, the, the biggest improvement, I think, would be when there's a, a, a check to do and the check tells you if what the good is and what the bad is. I would rather wait not know, and not know until we just find out if it's good or bad. You know I mean, and then you click it and it tells you what the bad is. Um, yeah. So I would I would rather not have that text up front. And then there's sometimes they do that in the game. Yeah. There's sometimes like when you interact with a person. Right. And, well, and you don't sure. know whether they're going to respond. It's like right. okay, I've got two here. Right. I, I, um, so do I or two pips showing? Yeah, I think it's mostly in the horror and the the mythos checks, mythos checks and, and the monster and the checks. monster checks. Yeah. But it, it, yeah, you're right. I mean, they do some of that. But I think it would be great if it was like all the way through. So although that's, you might not know when to spin your clues, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And that's part of it, right? You wouldn't know. Mark's because... more willing to shed blood and lose sanity in these games than I am. My sanity is, you know, on the border as on it the border is. As it is right. so, yeah. So for me, the game is pretty phenomenal because. Yeah. The the thing that strikes me the most is that I've had the first edition for a long time and we've enjoyed it. We've played we did. it several times. We did. But I have already gotten this version to the table twice as much as the original. Oh, I'd say even more than that. Yeah. I'd say easily three. Now, now I was the the dungeon guy, I think. Yes, you uh, were the keeper. And to be honest, with the first edition, I probably spent more time studying and preparing mm -hmm. for our, our gaming than I did for some of my college classes. And I got my first degree <laughs> in electrical engineering. So those weren't trivial yes. classes. Well, and the thing about that, too, is that if you just happen to put the wrong thing under the wrong oh, clue, you could the, whole the whole game is gone. Yeah. The whole game is screwed. Yeah. So, so. so the first game, and this is why I didn't give it super high marks for ease of learning, yep. um, but it's... I, I did kind of tilt it towards a little bit higher than usual, than average because compared to the first game, I probably would have given the first game a 0. 0.5 out of 4 because it requires so much effort, not just because we were learning yeah. both the base game and the, the expansion right. at the same time. We were doing all that. So there was so much effort to learn how to play. This one is much better. Oh, man. The app makes it much better. The rule books, unfortunately... Um, they, they split into two books, yeah. and the books are really well written right. and, and well illustrated. So I and have to give I even prefer that. I prefer the reference he, guide, he, which he, is just text. But there's the startup yeah. guide, learning learn to play guide, and there's the reference guide. Both are written really well, but unfortunately, you I don't feel like you can just Get finish, finish with, with yeah. the learn to play book. You really need to read the and reference. I think book. the fact that we had a leg up from the first edition really helped. Obviously. It did help us, yeah. But I but I've brought new players into this. Another big advantage of this version: new players. I've had them jump in within ten minutes and were yeah. engaged. So once you've learned, yeah. once somebody in your group has it's learned, learned yeah. uh, and invested the time, again, it's much less time than yep. the first one. Much less time. It is easy to get new players because you can tell them how to play, and uh, I think that'll make it easier for family and friends to join this game and enjoy it. Yep. And so there's very little about this I don't like. <laughs> I think one of the, the things about the, the figures in particular um, is that they don't particularly stick on the base as well as I would like. I actually ended up gluing them to the bases because they would just fall off all the time. You couldn't pick them up by the character. So that's, you know, probably nitpicking, but I mean, it's little things like that that uh, probably would have pushed it into four for me if, if it had already been that way. Oh, right. So, um, but the artwork, the oh, cards, yeah. the, the fact that everything is on the board and in the, the app does not keep track of where your characters are. That's mm. totally up to you and the board. So you're still very much engaged with what's in front of you. Um, I just, I, there's very little I don't like about this game. So I'm giving it a solid 3.5 out of four quarters. Okay, I also really enjoyed it, but I am giving uh -oh. a... Props. Props. <laughs> <clears throat> not quite as much as Mark, but yeah. I still am giving it a solid one, oh, nice. two, That's three awesome. Cthulhu's out of four. That's awesome. I, I well I can understand. <laughs> That's so, awesome. It's a great game, very thematic. Yes. Um, if you guys, if you and your your gaming group or your family enjoys games that aren't just about 
beating things up and killing them, but where you have to do a lot of investigation yeah. and discovery. Right. And Which, that's the thing is that the, the app really truly allows you to focus on the story focus on the clues mm -hmm. um, and, and exploring where before there was just a lot of stuff you were trying to keep just track of and now the app does that for you right so i can't recommend this game enough i can't wait for more please release those <laughs> those expansions and yes. uh scenarios as soon as possible because we've blown through these like i said we played through all of them once and i have played through all of them three times or more. So <laughs> it's just, and even the long scenario, oh my gosh, it's just so much, so much fun. It's really well done. Scenario. Yeah, really yeah. well done. So folks, that's our review this week. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you at, at the, the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.